Hey, we're back for another Guru's Rant. I want to thank you guys that have uh, enjoyed these posts and these videos that I've been making for you. Some of you have been really uh, receptive and <clears throat> have appreciated the words I've said. Some of you are not happy about this, and that's okay. That's fine, too. But I want to thank you, all of you who have reached out to me and sent me private messages supporting what I've been doing, and also who have been questioning the things that they've learned, and also those who are willing to think outside the box. Anyhow, tonight's rant is going to be something uh, more positive instead of talking about negativity in the martial art world. I want to talk about the positive things in the martial arts and why it's positive for you to train martial arts. <clears throat> well, we know that if you train correctly, you achieve longevity. You achieve a healthy heart, a healthy body, a healthy mind, and also a healthy spirit. I want to tell you a little bit about an old teacher of mine, Dr. Glenn J. Morris. Dr. Glenn J. Morris was a Bujinkan instructor under Sensei Hatsumi, a ninjutsu. I believe he was a 10th Don. And he had his own system called the Hoshin Roshiru, or the Hoshin Budo. And in Hoshin, he taught... A lot of stuff that came from World War One and World War Two martial art manuals, hand-to-hand -hand combat manuals, and he also taught things from old judo and old karate, alongside Western boxing and obviously the taijutsu that he learned from the Bujinkan, and his own research of internal martial arts that he had learned from Cheng De Wu, a Tai Chi master, and also from Brandon Lau. Soke Glenn, or Dr. Glenn, was an avid practitioner of Qigong, or Qigong. He understood very well the internal practices, and he applied them to his martial art. He also had learned and studied and researched a lot of principles that are found in Tai Chi, and in some of the more internal Wing Chun systems. He was an extremely well-rounded martial artist. Anyhow, this wonderful man was a teacher of mine, and I owe a lot of my martial understanding and internal understanding to this man. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us in the physical, but he's definitely with us in the spirit. And through this methodology that he shared with me. He shared with me both the internal, the Qigong, the meditative aspects of the martial arts, and the meditative aspects of awakening your own Kundalini. Kundalini is the energy that is residing at the base of your spine. The yogis uh, of India talk about this energy, and it's a basically a primordial energy that's deeply rooted in your own self. And when you awaken this energy, it rises up the spinal cord, up through all the seven major centers of your body, power centers. You can call this the chakras, as the Hindus call it. In the Chinese systems, they call it the dantians, and they call it uh, the different points along the governing vessel and the conception vessel. They call it the Kanan Li and the greater Kanan Li. So Dr. Morris was an avid, avid practitioner of these things. And he passed this stuff on to a several, to several of his students. <clears throat> One of them being his successor in his martial lineage, Soke Rob Williams. The other one being myself. The other one being James Alexander. And the other one being Teo Semko, my, my brother in training and a good friend of mine. And these four of us all trained under Dr. Morris, his martial art, and his internal cultivation practices. We had learned iron body training, uh, qigong healing, acupressure, dimak, and also we had learned his 
interpretation of internal martial arts based on his research from the Tai Jutsu from the Bujin Khan and like I said the Tai Chi from Cheng Dei Wu and a lot of the simple ass kicking methods that are found in the World War I and World War II manuals. It was Dr. Morris that encouraged me to learn Silat, particularly Sorak from the Detoirs. He had heard that the Detoirs were exceptional martial artists. Particularly, he was the first one to mention me about Babak Willem Detoirs. And he told me that out of the brothers, he was the one that understood internal martial arts. So my path has led to learning, ultimately, my Silat, and particularly to become a disciple and student of Uncle Willem de Tours. <clears throat> but anyhow, that's going to be another video where I talk about Uncle Willem and the first time I met him, and my training under him, and my training that he still provides for me now. But right now we're dedicating this video to Dr. Morris because pretty soon it's going to be his memorial for when he passed. Um, one of the things that Glenn did in particular that I always found extremely uh, great was that not only would he teach you how to hurt people, he would also teach you how to heal people. And he was under the belief that if you understood how to heal people, you would understand how to hurt them and vice versa. A lot of martial artists are either too yang or too yin. You have to have the balance of internal and external. And this was one of the things I learned from Dr. Morris and later was confirmed of all this methodology by Baba Willem de Tours. It's a recurring thread amongst people who do know the internal martial arts. Now all these years I've stayed quiet but I continued my training of the Hoshin Taijutsu alongside my Silat and my Qigong. I do Qigong every day. I've been doing Qigong since I was about 17, 16 years old. And I'm now 40 years old. A lot of people, when they see me, they say, Hey, you look like you're in your 30s, but I'm in my 40s now. Well, this is a, a common thing amongst those who train internally. If you look at Uncle Willem de Tours, he's in his 80s, but he still moves better than people in their 20s and 30s. <laughs> Dr. Morris was very similar to this. Very, very similar. He had a deep understanding of how to use the bones, the fascia, the tendons, how to connect energies in the body, how to make the bone marrow move, how to make the blood move, how to make the spinal fluid move. And all of this stuff is the backbone of true martial arts. So, <clears throat> one story I'll tell you with Dr. Morris that I had um, in his garage. He basically trained the hell out of us in his garage, slamming us on the floor, throwing us around, slapping us around, hitting us around. But at the same time, he would stand you up and teach you how to breathe properly. He would teach you how to realign your skeletal system. He would teach you how to move your internal energy to either take the pain or to transform the pain. And he would also teach you how to increase the red blood cells in the body and how to circulate the blood. These are things that true martial art masters know how to do. The majority of martial artists are external martial arts and external martial artists. A lot of them don't even believe in this stuff because they've never dabbled in it, they never trained in it. A lot of them are afraid to train it because they think it's mystical, but it's not mystical. It is a biological process. It's a biological understanding of how to train. <clears throat> so. The methods that I learned from Dr. Morris have allowed me to do a lot of interesting things that a lot of people just do not comprehend. People ask me, like, how the hell do you train so much? How is it that you work a full-time job? Or several years ago, I worked two jobs, three jobs, and I was literally sleeping two to four hours a night, 
still training, still powerlifting, and still doing my Penchak Silat. People ask me, how the hell do you do it? Well, the secret is, whenever I was not training, I was doing Qigong meditation. And if I was training, I would equally do equal amounts of yin practices. In Penchak Silat, you have it as Kembangan or Bua. You have it as shadow boxing. Or in Tai Chi, it's practicing your forms. If you understand how to practice your forms correctly, not only will it strengthen your body, you will learn how to heal your body and you will learn how to uh, learn to relax in a way as if you were sleeping even though you were awake. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, that's horse shit. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in this. That's fine. People can believe whatever the hell they want. There are masters in China that live away past 100 years of age. Some have even lived up to 200 years. And they did this by practicing Qigong. Some of them only slept a few hours a night. Sometimes one or two hours a night. So, anyhow, I, uh, I'm just thinking about Dr. Morris tonight and remembering the wonderful things he taught me. And I'm very thankful to have met such an incredible teacher even before I met a lot of the guys in the Sealot world. It is through him that I understood Sealot faster. It is through him that I understood there was a connection to Penchak Sealot, to the Chinese martial arts, and to the Japanese internal martial arts, which later was confirmed to me by my Sifu, my Babak, my true father in the martial arts, Babak Willem de Tours. Dr. Morris told me back in 2000 that Penchak Silat and Nimpo Taijutsu came from Kung Tao. He told me this way back then. <clears throat> Dr. Morris had also told me to continue to research things like Bakwa, Xing Yi, Tai Chi. And, like I said, he re told me to research the Sirak from the Dutoir's family. He believed that the Dutoir Sirak was the closest thing to the original internal martial art when Bagua, Xing Yi, and Tai Chi was once one art. When it was truly the Grand Fist. When I met Uncle Willem de Tours sometime in 1999, I think, for the first time, he had told me the same thing. So I knew I was on the right track. Anyhow, <clears throat> I'm very thankful to have had these teachers. I recommend highly that you read Dr. Morris's books. He's got several of them. One of them is called Path Notes. The other one is called Shadow Strategies. And the next one is called Martial Madness. And the fourth one is Quantum Crawfish for the Soul, I believe, or for the Mind. I don't remember exactly the name of the books, but... I highly recommend you read those books if you're serious about understanding internal and external martial arts. It'll give you a lot of pointers and a lot of understanding to what the old arts were really about. You have to ask yourself, how is it possible that ancient warriors were able to trek five to ten hours into the battlefield carrying, you know, 80 to 100 pounds of equipment and shields and swords that weighed 30, 40 pounds and spears. Some of them did this on horse. Some of them did it on foot. How the hell did they do that without the advent of today's steroids and today's testosterone therapies? How did they do it back then? The answer is internal martial arts. This is how they did it. Some of that knowledge is still alive today and you still see it in some of the true internal martial art masters and you also see it in some of the strength community. Some of the strong men that truly train the old ways of the barbell and the old ways of strong man training. Anyhow, I'll leave you with that. We will talk more about Dr. Morris soon and I'll give you some more stories about Glenn. And uh, I'm also going to be talking about other teachers of mine. 
And for now, we're going to keep the rant slightly positive. I hope you have a wonderful night. Take care.